anything with it besides just a mess around hobby. All right, I never thought I would do this for a living or be a YouTuber. Like the whole word YouTuber wasn't even a thing back then. You know, when I first started doing this for a job, I didn't know what to call it. People would ask me, what do you do? What, I'm a videographer? I don't know, what am I, right? Um, I did this for about two, three years as a hobby, two and a half years roughly. And then out of nowhere, I was laid off from my full-time job, which was an office job that I had for about four and a half years. And when this happened, it blindsided me. You know, I'd done things for that job. Like I had bought a condo near where the job was. I had made life changes so that I could basically work this job and I was thinking about doing it for the long term for the rest of my life. And when I got laid off, it was a shocker. And my parents were also like, oh God, you know, what are you gonna do? And the job sector in Connecticut at that time where I used to live was bad. The job market was awful. There weren't any other kind of jobs that were hiring in that sector. So I really didn't know what was gonna happen. <clears throat> um, I had a few months of unemployment. I had been given unemployment benefits from the job when I was laid off. I was like, well, I have enough money essentially to pay for things for like two, three months. So I have a little bit of time to try to make stuff work. Now at this time, you know, late 2010 when this happened, I was an up and coming YouTuber. I'd done YouTube for about two and a half years. People liked my content. I was actually known as almost like the underdog of the internet. I didn't have any sponsorships, partnerships. I wasn't with any group. No one was, was you know, pushing my content. It was more just a guy alone on the internet making gameplay. And that's all it really was. It was just a, a silly thing. And so when I basically decided, hey, let's give this a shot because if I don't do YouTube for a living and it doesn't work out, essentially everything's going to change. I, I might have to sell my condo. I might have to change my whole life because I can't afford all this. Like I said, there was no equivalent jobs that I could have gone to in the job market in Connecticut to make what I was making at the office job. I would have had to basically, you know, maybe be moved back in with my parents and, and all kinds of stuff, okay? And so, basically, uh, what I decided to do as I was uh, collecting... Oh, wait a minute. It wasn't... Uh, let me take that back. Did I say unemployment? It wasn't unemployment. It was um, a severance package. What do they call it? When you get laid off from a job, they give you a package that lasts a few months, right? I can't remember what it's called. It wasn't a severance... What is it called? It wasn't unemployment. I never filed for unemployment. That's that's incorrect. I said the wrong thing because some people are saying, you filed for unemployment? You never said that before. No, I completely misspoke. I never had unemployment benefits. Um, was it? Is it called a severance package? That's what I... Yes, that's what it was. It was a severance package where I, were, I had gotten laid off. They gave me enough pay to make up for like three months. All right? So I was going to lose my health benefits. I was going to lose everything, basically. Um... And so, when I had the three months or so to figure out what I wanted to do, um, I, I mean, I did go out there and apply for different jobs and stuff, but at the same time, I said, I wonder if I can make YouTube work as a job. And so I started doing my own thing, you know, and at that time, I still had the, the gaming channel. You know, DSP Gaming, this channel existed, but it wasn't monetized, because back then, you couldn't just monetize gameplay videos. But I had another channel, a vlogging channel, and I said, well, that's monetized, and I make a little bit of money on there. And I was trying to figure out how to make ends meet or whatever. And what happened was when I told my story of how I had lost uh, my job, right? And I, I didn't know what I was going to do. Because if YouTube didn't work out as a job, which I, again, I had never intended, all right? Um, you know, basically, I'd be, I'd be up shit's creek. I'd lose everything. People resonated with that. And people started supporting my content. They started watching the hell out of the ads. And I hate to say it basically clicking on all the ads on all my videos on my vlogging channel. And what ended up happening was within like two months, I was making insane amounts of money on YouTube. And I went to my parents and showed them. I was like, look at how much money I'm actually making. Like, this is ridiculous. I mean, no, no exaggeration. I was making, you know, over $10,000 a month on just a couple vlogs that I was pumping out on this channel. It didn't make sense. How could I be doing videos on a channel that's vlogging and I was making $10,000 plus a month just on the ad revenue on this one channel. It, you know, it was insane. So I knew it wasn't going to be sustainable, but I showed it to my parents and they were like blown away and they were like, what in the holy hell? Like they couldn't believe it. I was showing them the numbers. They would come over to my house and I would show them, look at, here's the, the, the statistics of what it's saying I'm making on these ads. And of course they were like, well, can that be sustainable? And I was like, no, I don't, I don't, I don't know how it could be, but I mean, here's what it's been. It, it lasted about a month and a half, basically two months, roughly. Um, and then YouTube basically said, 
yeah, this isn't kosher. People are coming to your videos and they're clicking. This is not normal activity and therefore we're suspending your, your AdSense and you're not going to make any more money on your videos. So then what ended up happening was I got partnered with Machinima. Through that partnership with Machinima, I was able to put ads on all my gameplay videos and that's really when I started making the big money. I mean, there were some months I was making insane money back then because back then the ad revenue was sky high on YouTube. So then it was funny because all this happens, right? And as I, all this is happening, my parents and I go to a Chinese restaurant. And at the end of the meal, we get fortune cookies. We open the fortune cookie and it says, I shit you not. It says on the fortune, you know, moving forward, you won't, you won't have to worry about money anymore. And I'm reading it and I'm like, how on earth is that a fortune? Because typically when you go to like a Chinese restaurant, the fortune is something so generic. This one was like specific to my situation of what was going on. And I was like, how exactly could that be, how could how could that be the fortune I just got? And I saved it and I put it on my refrigerator at home to show it wasn't fake or anything. And it was crazy because then I started being a full-time YouTuber, partnered with Machinima, and I started making crazy, crazy money. Um, It was wild. Now, my parents didn't really watch my content. Here's the thing, I'm a gamer. They don't care about video games. They they never did. My dad was never really into them. The only games he knew about were the ones he played with me when I was in the 1980s. Um, he never got into gamer culture or anything. He didn't care. My mom, she's not even on the internet. So to them, what I was doing was like this weird, wild new world that you know they're not familiar with. So they didn't know about it. They didn't really care about it. They don't watch the content. They just don't, you know? Don't you want to know what they did watch? Cooking with the King. They watched the Cooking with the King videos of me trying to cook and being stupid and not knowing what I was doing. They laughed at them because they thought they were funny because they got what I was going for with those, okay? But outside of that, um, you know, they don't really watch anything. So to them, it was like, whoa. So you're going to be able to do this crazy thing on the internet that's kind of unorthodox. You're going to make a good amount of money doing it, right? That's crazy. But the thing is... I don't think any of us really knew that there would be longevity to it or anything. For, for our, our attitude was always kind of, we called it ride the wave. You know there's going to be ups and downs, but definitely ride the wave and see how long it takes us and how far it takes us. Because one day I might have to stop doing it and do something different. But at least now, you know, for the short term, this is something that it looks viable that I can do. And let's be honest, in the last, you know, 12, 13 years I've been doing this for a job, things have changed absolutely dramatically, right? Dramatically. To the point where now I barely even do the same thing. Can you even argue that today I'm making the same kind of content or whatever? Of course, it's so different. But, you know, to me, uh, it has been a wild ride that was worth writing. And I absolutely love what I do today. Um, but my parents never really reacted in a negative way. I will tell you this. My mom was always skeptical and like, you know, how long are you going to make this happen? How can you keep going? One day you're going to have to transition out of it. But here's the thing, and here's really the, the major difference here. The transition that's happening isn't exactly what was expected. The transition is you can't just play video games for the rest of your life, right? That's correct. I really, you know, there's no way. I'm 41 years old. I can't just sit around playing games for the rest of my life. It ain't going to work. But transitioning into different styles of content, literally vlogging, podcasting, the React content I'm doing right now, and other things as I get older phasing out all of the gameplay and instead having that be more of a balance between other topics and other kinds of content, I do feel like I can make this happen long term. You know, there's enough people who are interested in me and my opinions on things and, and hanging out with me on a daily basis to support this being my occupation. Um, and I didn't really see that back then. Back then it was just gaming, gaming, gaming. That was gaming was what was going to pay the bills. Gaming was the big thing. But now I've seen how things have changed and in a lot of ways, the gaming thing isn't necessarily really the big thing anymore a lot of times. I mean, yeah, if a big game comes out and I get a big boost in views or whatever, yes, but for the most part, let's be honest, things are changing on YouTube and everywhere else. And you got to move with those changes. And people aren't just looking for someone to sit here and talk about games all day, every day anymore. You know what I mean? Um, but today, you know, because, you know, uh, years ago, I had a conversation with my mom. And she was basically like, you're probably going to have to phase out from doing YouTube and get a, 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 a in-real-life job. You know what I'm saying? And I kind of agreed with her, and then the pandemic happened. And we looked at that situation, and we were like, dude, 
if I didn't have a YouTube job during the pandemic, I probably would have lost everything. Because any job that I would have had, I likely would have gotten laid off or lost. And I would have lost my house. I would have lost my livelihood. It would have been the end of everything. Thank God I had an internet-based job that I could continue to do and entertain people who at that time were very, very distraught over what was happening in the world and in their personal lives, you know? So it would have been crazy to quit what I was doing because I actually would have screwed myself over inadvertently. So now instead of being, listen, there's absolutely no way that I can continue to do gameplay for the rest of my life. But my plan is to transition into other kinds of content, which I've been doing, if you haven't noticed, and it's been successful. So now my parents don't, you know, do they ask me, what are you doing? No, I tell them every once in a while, hey, I'm doing a special marathon. Hey, we, I, you know, I got a podcast. They don't care. They really don't care. They, I don't think they've really ever watched the content. To them, it was just weird that I found a way to transition from, you know, IRL jobs, in-person office jobs, retail jobs, into something that was internet-based. But since the major focus of my content is gaming. I don't really think they give a shit. They never really watched it. They never really talked about it. They're happy for me, obviously, that I can do what I love for a living. But at the same time, they're aware of all the ups and downs and things I've been through. I tell them. I talk to them every single week. I tell them all what's going on in my life. So they're well aware of all the, the you know, the, the big, good, positive things and the horrible things that can happen being an internet content creator. So there you go. 